In this section, I'm going to talk about um, basically project economics. So the different metrics that you can use to work out whether a particular project that you're working on or that you're planning to, um, more importantly, that you're planning to start, will it be profitable or not? And, you know, how can you how can you determine that? And there's many different ways you can um, you can use to do this. Okay, so the simplest way um, or, you know, that you can consider um, the income of uh, um, throughout the lifetime of a project is what's called a cash flow diagram. And um, there's an example of one here. And I use this same example th th over all of these slides, actually. So basically, you have um, your time in years. Well, actually, it doesn't have to be years. It's a, the time um, scale suitable to the project. So it could be years, it could be months, it could be days or weeks or whatever. So I've chosen years for um, this example. And basically on the direction of the line, so if it's above the line, it's positive. So it's um, income generated into the project. And if it's below the project, below the line, then it's negative. It's, um, you know, money that's been spent by the project. So as I say, I'm going to use the same example throughout all these different slides. So consider the example of a manufacturing plant the company wants to purchase. It costs 100 million um, upfront costs and it's expected to generate 30 million over five years. So you can see I've got my um, 100 million initial investment there. And the magnitude of this line is proportional to the, um, the the cost. So you can see 100 million here. And then I've got five 30 million arrows spaced out over the five years, showing the cash flow that I'll have over this time. Okay, so in these next few slides, I'm then going to talk about how we can um, work out, uh, determine. Um, the different metrics to see whether this is uh, profitable or not. Well, one of the first ways and the simplest ways is to use what's called um, payback period. And this is a simple me uh, measure of profitability over time. And basically it's defined as a time for when the cumulative uh, value is zero. Um, and you, if you express that mathematically, the way that you um, express that is you say the net, the payback period is um, the net instalment costs divided by the annual net savings um, or earnings. So for example, our example, the payback period is equal to our net installation costs. So it's, we paid out uh, um, 100 million um, for the plant and we've got no other, we don't get any other rebates on that or any other kind of um, initiatives. So, you know, 100 minus zero, that's zero. So it's 100 divided by the annual savings, um, if we said it's going to generate um, 30 million uh, for five years, so divided by 30, and that gives us a payback period, a period of um, basically three and a third years. So after three and a third years, then um, our cash, our cumulative um, value will be zero, and you know for the next uh, year and a bit, then that's just going to be pure profit just to kind of show what that looks like schematically. So these are the cumulative um, costs for each year. So we start off at minus 100, because obviously that's what we've got to pay out initially for our plant. And then each year it steps up by 30 million. And you can see our payback period is three and a third. So it, it's there. So it falls between obviously year three and four from when it goes negative to positive. Um, and then we end up obviously with our with our um, profit. So that's payback period. And it's a fairly, as I say, fairly simple way of calculating basically when you get your money back um, from a project. The return on investment um, is kind of um, is basically the ratio of the money earned or lost you know to, um, not don't always earn it on a project to the amount of the money that was invested. Um, so again expressed mathematically the return on investment is our net income divided by the investment. So using our example so our net income is 150 million because we got 30 million for five years, minus our 100 million initial um, costs for the project. Um, so that gives us a difference of 50. And if we divide that by our investment, which is 100 million, then you can see we've got a 50% return on investment. So in other words, we um, this project is, you know, based on these values, it's um, we've got a net of 50 million, so it generates 50 million over the five years. But we've had to put in 100 million at the start, so we've got 50% back on our um, initial investment. And again, this is a very simple way of um, just see, looking to whether, looking in to see whether a product is uh, financially viable or not. However, the 
the issue with those two um, metrics that I've shown you, um, the payback period or return investment, is the need of them take into account the time uh, value of money. And the problem with that is money does have a time value. So one pound today won't be worth one pound five, ten, fifteen, twenty years in the future. The the value of money kind of diminishes with time. So a more um, sensible way and a more um, kind of realistic way of calculating whether a project is financially viable, especially if it spans um, long periods of time, is to calculate what's called the net present value or MPV. Now this is sometimes called the discounted cash flow. Um, you know, if you're looking on other sites, you might um, see it called that. And basically that's the reason the name it gets its name is because you use a discount rate to calculate the um, the present value. So sometimes called discounted cash flow. Anyway, whether you call it MPV or discounted cash flow, basically what you're doing is you're you're calculating the present value of the cash based on an assumed interest rate over the period of time or the lifetime of the project. Now, if you're working in a company, the discount rate is normally set by the um, chief financial officer, the CFO. And that can be linked to another, you know, number of factors, um, such as the company's debt or expectations, their appetite for risk, and so on. But anyway, the way that you calculate the present value is you take the future value of um, what the um, the money is, and you divide it by um, 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n, where n is the um, number of time periods that the interest rate is being applied over. So it could be, again, months, years, weeks, whatever. So kind of just to illustrate that with our um, example. So if we assume a discount rate of 6%, that's what's been set by our um, uh, chief um, financial officer, then the way to calculate it is to um, basically set up this table. So we put our time period here. This is the number of years that we've got. Um, this is our revenue, you, you know, the kind of future value, if you like. Then this is the discount rate. So if you work that out, so if you put in 6% into here, you can work out the multiple. Um, you've got to be able to times the, um, uh, the future value by to get your present value. OK, so in the first year, um, the future value is the present value. OK, so we've got a minus 100 million in the first year. But in our, um, in, by the end of the first year, the 30 million that we'd be getting isn't really worth 30 million in today's money. It's only worth um, 28 um, million in today's money. And the further we go in time, the less that becomes because of um, the interest rate and the way that um, the value of money changes with time. So this gives you a much better way. So when, um, it, you know, if working out whether a project is going to be financially viable over the long term. So you do it for each of the um, ingoings and outgoings. Remember, you can do this for the outgoings as well as the ingoings with um, time. Times it by the, the factor based on the, the um, discount rate. Then we end up with all the present values. And then if we sum all these, instead of ending up with the um, 50 million that we've done it if we've just done it on the kind of uh, future value based on a present value with this discount rate of six percent um we can see that our next net profit in um in the kind of present value is 26.4 million now this is greater than zero so it's good the project is still viable but it's not the 50 million that we originally thought it would be because as i say the value of money changes over time so the mpv is a much better way of um uh working out whether a project is viable especially over long periods of time where the time value of money uh, changes now there's a number of um, elements of risk and errors that can be associated with the net present value um, as you might expect and there's three main um, errors if you like in calculating the, the net present value the first is the initial investment now, if it's a piece of equipment with a clear price tag, then actually there's little risk. It's quite obvious what that is. But if there's, um, you know, if it's, for example, like a new IT system or a new building or something, then to estimate the time and resources, you need um, 
that you need for that project, then the risk is higher because you it's a little bit unware. You know, you've got a lot of um, got so many variables in there. You you could you could get it wrong. So it could be easy or hard depending on what it is. The second one is the discount rate. So as I said, I talked about in the previous slides. You know, that's normally given to you, but um, in calculating that, um, if it's um, incorrectly um, predicted, you know, even if the discount um, rate is correctly predicted, then it might not be stable over the duration of the project. So you might assume it's 6% for five years, but it might be 6% in the first two years, but then change to 3% in the next few years. Um, and if the interest rate goes up, then the NPV will go down. So obviously trying to predict correctly predict the discount rate for the whole project is um you know has an element quite a high element of risk and that's even assuming that it stays the same which it probably won't so you know there is a little bit of um, um art in getting that right and the third thing that's um uh, fairly risky is from re returns so in our previous example we said you know 100 million up front that's probably quite clear the equipment costs um, 100 million but we may probably made some judgment um, in the 30 million that we're going to get back over the five years and you know that might be wrong we might only get 20 or 25 so the returns are quite hard to predict and often overestimated actually um, you know people like to think things will perform better than they actually do um, and obviously if they don't then um, that will severely impact the financial viability of the project Okay, so the last thing is um, the internal rate of return. And this is linked to the net present value. And basically, um, what the internal rate of return is, is it is the um, discount rate that you'd have to use that would that you'd have to use to have a cumulative net present value of zero. Okay, and that's kind of expressed mathematically as that. So, you know, take a while to look at that. Hopefully it, it makes sense. So we use six percent, and we ended up with a profit of, um, in a net present value profit of twenty six million, something like that. But what would the rate have to be for it for us to break even? So for our example, um, you know, this is what we said. So our net present value is equal to zero. So it's the hundred plus our thirty over the internal rate of return to the power of one plus thirty over one plus the internal rate of return squared, and and so on and so on. Now it's difficult to calculate ana analytically. You can't really have a simple um, formula to do that. But most most um, packages such as Excel have a function that allow you to calculate it quite easily, and it means then that you can compare the internal rate of return um, from one investment to another, and then kind of based on your level of risk, that will help you um, decide on um, which project you want to go for. So, for our example, if you, um, for example, you know if you use Excel, then and use the functions in there, then you get an internal rate of return of um of nine percent. Okay, so that concludes this lecture on engineering economics. Um, if you have any comments or queries, then let me know. Um, thanks for listening.